All right, so we've got one debate down, one to go. So on night two, facing off, we will see Jay Inslee, Kirsten Gillibrand, Tulsi Gabbard, Michael Bennett, Bill de Blasio, Cory Booker, Andrew Yang, Julian Castro, Kamala Harris, and Joe Biden. So this, in my view, even if it excludes Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, is probably going to be the one debate that I am looking to see real movement. And when I say looking to see real movement... I mean, we're going to see everyone dogpile on Joe Biden and finish him. Like, there should no longer be a Joe Biden campaign if everyone plays their cards right. You have to team up. You're all against Joe Biden. This is nine versus one. His lead is still large. I mean, it's diminished slightly, but he's not going down fast enough. So if you were on this debate stage and your name is not Joe Biden, take him down. Take him down. Now, the problem is that it's going to be a little bit more difficult this time because Joe Biden is more prepared to, you know, I think, absorb some of these blows. Last time, I don't think he was very prepared for the debate. This time, I think he's probably aware of the fact that there are going to be people who will dogpile on him because he's currently still the front runner. So I think he's going to be aware of it. But if enough people dogpile on Joe Biden, that could bring him down even more, which they all have a vested interest in. And I don't necessarily know that Kamala Harris will be the one to stand out in terms of going after Biden the most. But what I'm kind of expecting is for Cory Booker to try to replicate the success that Kamala Harris had. So I, I expect Cory Booker, since he just was pushing for criminal justice last year, to go after Biden because of the crime bill. I think if he were to do that and make the case in a way that Kamala did, where it's just, you know, it, it's personal, it's passionate. He could potentially bring down Joe Biden even further. Another thing that I am expecting here is I'm expecting Tulsi Gabbard fully to go after Kamala Harris because we already know that she attacked Kamala, I think it was last week, maybe the week before, and she said that Kamala Harris wasn't qualified. Now, me personally, I wouldn't make the case that another candidate isn't qualified in the age of Trump just because I don't necessarily know that that's something that's going to resonate. But Tulsi, if she's not going to go after Biden, should go after Kamala. And I think that that's smart because, I mean, think about it. Kamala is basically going to be one of the front runners once Joe Biden is out, if that is in fact the case. So I think Tulsi is smart to kind of turn her attention towards Kamala Harris. My one thing is that I wish she would have saved her criticism for Kamala because now Kamala is aware of the fact that Tulsi is going to be coming after her and now Kamala is going to have some type of rehearsed response. So I think that it would have been maybe a little bit more effective if Kamala was just kind of hit out of the blue by Tulsi Gabbard. But nonetheless, maybe Tulsi knows about that and maybe she kind of put a little bit of part of an attack out there knowing that Kamala will respond to that and maybe she already has a response cooked up, meaning maybe Tulsi Gabbard is you know, thinking three steps ahead and she's playing four-dimensional chess. Either way, if Tulsi goes after Kamala and it's effective, it's good. You know, it's a little bit risky because Kamala is a good debater, but I think that we saw last time that Tulsi Gabbard is also a good debater. When she spoke, I mean, she basically annihilated Tim Ryan. We need to do some damage to their numbers because, you know, currently Kamala is surging. Joe Biden is dropping, but not fast enough. So if we see, you know, the Corys and Kamala's and, you know, even Bill de Blasio's of the world go after Joe Biden and Tulsi go after Kamala. You know, this could be a really interesting debate. Now, when it comes to Tulsi Gabbard, last time after the first debate, she was the most searched candidate on Google. So she has that much needed confidence boost. People know who she is. So now I want to see her kind of broaden her platform and really just get in there more. I think one thing was that she didn't insert herself into the conversation enough last time. And this time, I really want her to stand out even more and shine. And I think she could do that if she does go forward with the strategy that I expect her to in, you know, kind of going after uh, Kamala Harris. So really the main people, the four main people who I'm watching, Cory Booker, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and Tulsi Gabbard. Another person who could have a pretty strong presence is Bill de Blasio. Now, here's what I want to say about Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang has got to stand out this time. He already qualified for the third debate, so I don't think it would be make or break. But last time his performance was so poor, even in spite of, you know, the controversy about MSNBC supposedly cutting his mic. I mean, even when he spoke, it wasn't very impressive. So he's got to stand out. And I don't know how he does that, because last time when he talked about universal basic income, 
there were no fireworks like I expected. You know, there, there wasn't much there. So he's got to do something to set himself apart. And I get that he's a nice guy. So it's probably just unnatural for him to be aggressive. But he's got to set himself apart because this is kind of an audition, right? What American voters are looking at is who's going to be the best to take on Donald Trump. We need someone who is assertive, someone who is not going to sit back and just get steamrolled by Donald Trump, who has a big mouth. And Andrew Yang needs to demonstrate to people, I am the one to take on Donald Trump. I'm not afraid of him, and I'm not afraid to call out the people on this debate stage because I'm fighting for the American people, and, you know, I have the right message. I have the winning message. Now, when it comes to Julian Castro, last time his performance was okay. He kind of maintained, but he just didn't do enough to give himself the boost that he needed to basically have momentum to even get to the third debate, and I don't know if he's going to qualify. I suspect that he will, but He's got to pick it up because last time I think it was great for him to go after Beto O'Rourke. He went after Beto on immigration, but now he's got to go after someone like Joe Biden. I mean, if you're Julian Castro and even Kirsten Gillibrand, it would be smart if you tag teamed with Tulsi Gabbard against Kamala Harris because she has a very bad record as a prosecutor in California. So why more people don't use this against her? I don't know. So I'm expecting Tulsi to go after Kamala, and I think it would be smart if people like Kirsten Gillibrand, Julian Castro, who are kind of in the same lane as Kamala, join Tulsi in trying to take down Kamala a little bit, because Kamala's going to have her hands full this time. Last time, you know, she kind of came out of nowhere and just annihilated Joe Biden and won that debate. But now, if you are attacking her from both sides, if you have Joe Biden attacking her, she's attacking him, and other people on stage are attacking her, and then she's going to have to fire back. You know, on one hand, you have this conundrum where you could elevate her because everyone is focusing on Kamala, but at the same time, you do need to expose her record because she doesn't have a good record. She's a flip-flopper. She's flip-flopped on Medicare for All how many times now during this primary? So I think it would behoove Tulsi Gabbard, um, Kirsten Gillibrand even, Bill de Blasio, all to call Kamala out as the flip-flopper that she is. Let her go after Biden and you go after her. So that's what I want to see, and that's kind of what I expect. Really, my eye will be on Tulsi, Kamala, and Biden. Uh, and Booker to a lesser extent. I don't know if he's going to be as successful as Kamala. I think he's definitely going to try to replicate Kamala's success. And if he doesn't even attempt it to call out Joe Biden's, you know, crime bill, what a missed opportunity, right? But I mean, we'll have to see. Um, hopefully, the best case scenario is we bring Biden down again and he comes out as the clear loser. And it's not even questionable. Like last time, nobody thought that Joe Biden was the winner. Everyone saw him universally as the loser to the extent where he had to hold a press conference and apologize for the comments that he made about segregationists. We need that to happen again. We need him to be so badly damaged that he comes out with a press conference and apologizes. That's what we need to see. And we don't necessarily need to see that from Kamala, but her numbers need to at least stop surging. That would be best case scenario. And if Tulsi plays her cards right, she can get a big boost but it's going to be tough because Kamala is a risky situation because she's a good debater. But again, Tulsi is a good debater too. So this is really going to be fascinating. This is really the debate that I am looking out for because I think this is where we're going to see the most fireworks. This is going to be the biggest, you know, overall influence, I think, on the aggregate Democratic Party primary. So I'm certainly looking forward to it and I will be eager to share my thoughts as soon as it is over.